Hello, I'm Jonathan, and on this episode of Brain Stuff, I'd like to introduce you to my colleague, Lil Bub. <laughs> Look how cute she is, and she has a better 401k package than I do, and stock options. But you know what's even cuter than Lil Bub? Lil Bub and Grumpy Cat together? Oh man, I'm experiencing so many feels. The only thing that would be better is if they were joined by Nyan Cat. You probably recognize my feline friends as internet phenomena. There's viral videos about them, image macros, catchphrases, and more. We often see these referred to online as memes. But what exactly is a meme, anyway? Well, the term was first coined in 1976 by celebrity scientist Richard Dawkins in his book The Selfish Gene. Dawkins argued that Darwinian evolution is driven by replicators, the first being genetics. The second replicator was a unit of cultural transmission that he called a meme. Basically, he's talking about self-replicating units of culture that take on a life of their own. Dawkins argued that, like genes, memes are replicators that are copied and have some sort of influence over their own probability of replication. And Dawkins wasn't talking about internet cats. Not yet anyway. No, he meant cultural customs like fashion, art, or even religion. Like all things Darwinian, only the fittest memes survive. For example, how about language? There's a constant struggle going on between words, grammar, and understanding that determines what we all agree on as English. So in the same way that biological evolution is driven by the survival of the fittest in the gene pool, cultural evolution is driven by the most successful memes. Over the years, Dawkins' ideas were taken further by other theorists like Daniel Dennett and Susan Blackmore. Blackmore even takes it a step further and suggests that memes account for consciousness itself. To her, the human mind is simply a nest of memes. She was basically like, Yo dog, I heard you lack memes, so I put a meme in your memes so you can replicate while you replicate. Hang on a second, Jonathan. That's right, I'm interrupting myself because I can't wait for the next episode to tell you about the newest revolution in shaving, Harry's. For just $15, Harry's will ship you an entire shaving kit. That's a handle, three blades, and shaving cream. These blades are half the price of the big competitors and half the hassle too. But don't take my word for it. If you go to harrys.com and use the promo code BRAINSTUFF, you can save $5 off your first purchase. Try it today and let me know what you think. All right, back to me, uh, the other me. I'm so sorry I did that. See, if genes are riding around in the bodies of animals and plants, or lumbering robots as Dawkins calls them, then memes are when those robots, as in us, start imitating each other. We started by copying gestures, sounds, and other behaviors from one another. This evolved into stories and books, philosophical concepts, and other complex ideas. Success! The way this theoretically works is that memes evolve through the process of variation, mutation, competition, and inheritance. Each of these affects the meme's ability to reproduce or be imitated further. Some memes may go extinct. One does not simply survive, reproduce, and mutate. Dawkins, for example, considered the idea of God to be a meme with high survival value that's reproduced and evolved throughout humanity. And if you hadn't guessed it already, Dawkins is an atheist. Now, Blackmore thinks of human beings as mean machines that use language like symbiotic parasites to shape culture by infecting our minds. In 2008, she took this concept one step further and argued that we're currently experiencing the beginning of a third evolutionary replication process based around technology and digital information, which she calls, wait for it, teams. Now, memetics definitely has its critics. You know what the kids say, haters gonna hate. Do the kids still, still say that? Well, some scholars think it's silly and meaningless. H. Allen Orr at the University of Rochester once called it cocktail party science. Many meme detractors dislike how the theory discounts human autonomy. It implies that while we think we're carefully selecting our belief systems, we're actually choosing the safest ideas that are most likely to pass on to other people. Like the infamous honey badger, memes don't give a shit. So long as we keep sharing harmless videos of cats on the internet, new ones will continue to be published, eventually transforming into the next viral video sensation. Maybe it's the one you're watching right now. I could only be so lucky. So what do you think? Are memes in control of our minds and culture? Or are they just pseudoscience balderdash? 
let us know in the comments below. And if you want to keep this brain stuff meme a replicating, click on that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you soon.